Hello, Eric King coming to you once again from Nugget of Truth and the Shepherd's Way. Coming to you from Mount Shiloh and it's extremely cold right now. But I wanted to give you um, some information that I've been um, requested to give by other students that are going deep in a specific area in their study regarding what happens at death and, and where the spirit goes, the pneuma, and the difference between the, the, uh, the spirit and the soul and the body and uh, these types of things. But real quick, for, for those of you that had inquired, um, what the ancient Antiochian church teaches here during the seventh epoch or epoch of church time, we're in the Laodicean church epoch, we're in the time of the end. Not the end of time yet, but the time of the end. Now we entered the end times since the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. But we enter, we enter the time of the end uh, at the beginning of the Laodicean period of the church, with which almost all true Protestant denominations understand that study eschatology in a deep manner, know that we are in fact living in the Laodicean age or era of the church, be that as it may. This is why this information is coming to you here from the ancient Antiochian church in America right now, which is proclaiming the seventh message. It's time. The first heaven, we understand, is the one that we're in right now, which is Earth's atmosphere, where we breathe, and where we see things, and the birds fly, and the clouds float, where we experience the weather, the four seasons. We have the four Gospels, we have the four seasons. We see God in the things of creation, the four temperaments. So, we understand that this Earth's atmosphere, and in this Earth's atmosphere there are invisible entities here, angelic beings, interdimensional beings, and we also know through and in this seventh period of time, the church is starting to awake out of the Laodicean period and truly understand the Bible and realize that we're also dealing with celestial beings that are interfering on a different scale. People have called them extraterrestrials, UFOs, whatnot, be that as it may. We have it documented. Are you watching the signs of the times? But they too are in this first heaven in which we experience. The second heaven we understand is outer space. Uh, outer space angelic beings are also in outer space. Here we see comets, we see stars, the planets, the moon, the sun. We can enter this second heaven, but we're not created to live there. So in order to enter the second heaven, which is the cosmos, the universe, if you will, we have to put on new clothing and adjust and modify our bodies to go there. But yes, we can go to outer space and experience the seventh heaven. Light and dark fight here. Also, not just in Earth's atmosphere, but in the cosmos. It has also been uh, anciently defined as the desire world, where, where the sinful nature is being uh, broadcasted there too. And coming to a theater near you soon as we begin to watch the signs in the heavens. The third heaven, Paul was brought there. Paul was brought to the third heaven. And he had to go out of his body. He says, whether in this body or whether out of this body, he says, in other words, if I was in the body, it was a vision, but if I was really there, my spirit soul had to have an out-of-body experience for me to get there. So I get there, he says, and there he says, I see things in that third heaven that I cannot reveal. We hold to a spirit body form in this paradise. If you were to die now before the harpazo, your spirit soul would leave your body if you're a born-again, regenerated Christian, and there you would abide in that third heaven, that paradisical heaven. So there is a body imagery there. There is, there is archetypical form there, if you will, in that third heaven, which is a holding place until the second coming in the harpazo of the church. Other studies we have on that. The fourth heaven is actually the atmosphere of that paradise region. In other words, there's tangibility in that third heaven, and in that third heaven there is an atmosphere, and in that atmosphere there are beings that are monitoring that atmosphere, which are angels, archangels, cherubs, guardian angels, there in that atmosphere of paradise. Then the ancient Antiochian church understands yet a fifth heaven, which is the outer court. Now we get into the region of the triunity of God and a placement of that triunity where God can actually have space 
to communicate to his creation in the most sacred place of his being, that fifth heaven being the outer court, the sixth being the holy place of that temple in the heaven, and the seventh heaven, of course, being the most holy, where the Trinity itself, the usia, the one substance, resides. Circumference, everywhere, center, nowhere. The holy of the most holies. Now, in that first holy place out of the most holies in the temple is a special meeting place with the Lord where the Father and Son congregate and meet. And it is here where all spirits are created. And God breathes those spirits back down through those lower heaven, heavenly regions back to, heaven, to planet earth and into man and it awakes in a flesh being and becomes a human. And so we read in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14 regarding Yeshua Jesus our Christ. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, there it is, plural, through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession through the aeons, and that word has different interpretations that need to be studied contextually. So continue to study here and study the eight laws of hermeneutics also here at the ancient Antiochian Church of God. That was deep. That was deep on purpose. I am answering some questions from a group of students that are going in, into that direction. Others that listening may have been lost there, but those who have even much more information on it, I hope that fills in some of the gaps that you asked. Stay with us here at the Nugget of Truth.